I like that he says, I have a million questions, but I can only think of one. <laughs> and I was like, so, so you have one, right? I don't <laughs> think you have a million questions then. <laughs> if you can't think of something, you don't have it in your brain. Nope, so that's, that's not that's what that's you have. Question. Thing, yeah. I have a million questions. Here's the one I can think of, but here's the one I can't think of. <laughs> <laughs> Space questions. Turner Skiffin. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, though we reserve the right to define that however the fuck we want to week to week. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. This movie is perfect. This it is, is the perfect <laughs> motion picture. 32nd episode, everybody. Get out and watch Fire Maidens. What Done. a way to start the fucking year. Yes. And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Complete, Noah. Whole <laughs> as a man. <laughs> Ready, willing, able. Turns out this whole time you've had a this movie shaped hole in your heart and you didn't even know it. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Fire Maidens of outer space. Fuck yeah, we did. It's the Fuck story yeah, of a guy with a really big kink for polygamous alien cults, furry fandom, voyeurism, and giving himself roofies. And he made <laughs> an almost porn about it. So I have a close theory. to a porn. It's so close. Okay, the, here's my theory, and we can make this a game as we go. I think he made a porn and then subtracted the porn out to make a movie in 1956. Yeah. Okay. Like he sat down with his legal representation and they were like, okay, so here's the permits and stuff. And you know, you're a pornographer now. And he was like, oh, fuck, shit. No, yeah. it's it's fine. It's like nine minutes of my dick to cut out and then it'll just be a bad movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there's like vestigial moments where like if there was a porn being shot right next to these actors moments ago, a lot more makes sense to me. Sure. Yeah. No, I'm excited to like follow that thread throughout the review. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the schlocky space adventures of the 40s and 50s, but you got distracted part of the way through your writing by your 12 year old boner, you <laughs> will love this movie it happens there to the a, best of us. I don't know if I anyone else can relate to this, but there's this golden age when you don't know anything about sex yet, but your body is like, I want it. Mm -hmm. That's what wrote this movie. <laughs> the part that's like, I want to, I want to run at a girl and then like punch and then she punches and then we're both <laughs> super saiyans. I think that's what it is. <laughs> so, the, the golden age you're describing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the golden age. Yeah, okay. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, no, so look, okay, of all the movies we have ever watched for this show, this is the one that it's hardest to believe was not parody. Yep. Right? Like, it it was so fucking bad in so many glorious ways that so often I was like, and they really did this in earnest? <laughs> <laughs> this guy was trying, so was it Cy Roth? On purpose, you say? Yeah. yeah uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> trying so hard. All right, so is there anything you want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? I'm going to go with best worst spaceship controls, <laughs> which were hilarious. So first of all, the spaceship, the rocket has a steering wheel. Yep. So steering like wheel. Yep. we watch a guy, they're in space and he's just like doing the mime of the, he's, he's like moving back and forth doing the steering wheel. So I don't, I don't know a lot. I don't think that's how we're, no, do they have steering wheels? I feel like they don't, right? I mean, they, they have th thrusters that can be controlled by like, a steering I guess any wheel shape you could make lever. it. Yeah, you, right, you right. Put, yeah, exactly. But no, you don't make little adjustments like you do when you're on the fucking like oh right. okay no we're good, uh, we're good. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. okay that's a plastic bag but maybe it has something hard inside it yeah yeah right I'll straddle it I'll straddle yeah. it yeah. <laughs> You're drifting lanes, getting beeped at by the guy behind you. But it's not just the steering wheel. No, Keith. no, it's There's not. There's more to it than that. There's only slightly more. The entire spaceship <laughs> and everything it does is controlled by either a steering wheel for, you know, steering or mm -hmm. 
two penises. levers for literally everything else. That are yes. they're next to each other, and between those two up and down levers, you can do everything in space travel. <laughs> Every single system on this ship. Would we say levers, Heath, or would Sorry, we say Sorry, I would penises? say like, <laughs> like Gen 1 video games from Noah's collection controllers. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yes, exactly. Sure. This Noah should be holding these levers and being like, and you have to understand how advanced these were for yep. the time. <laughs> <laughs> so. There's a punch card. So I feel like my best worst is sort of an extension of yours, Heath. I was going to go with best worst Space exploration equipment. All right. So this is the first manned uh, mission to another planet that we're seeing here. And they have equipped themselves the way that I might for a day of bird watching. Right. Yeah. But not one that like was hot or cold. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, and when you say bird watching, you mean uh, a Polaroid camera and mm -hmm. a holstered gun. <laughs> well, binoculars and a gun. Yeah. So binoculars. Spoilers. And, and, a, and fucking guns. Yeah. Well, your astronauts have to be armed now, don't they? Obviously. Yeah. And of course, I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to go with best worst sexually predatory side character. <laughs> Anderson. My friends, Anderson, the greatest character in all of fiction, literature, cinema, film, whatever you choose to choose as your genre will do literally nothing except be like, oh, fuck that, in 1950s voice, the entire... F I kept waiting. I kept wa I'd be like, well, this situation, surely when it's Anderson's turn to talk, he will not just mention that he would like to fuck something woman-shaped, but everything, no matter what's happening or why or when, he is single-minded. It's beautiful. Yep. <laughs> so... All right, well, I'll tell you what, before we get started, we need to dial up our magnospheres and calibrate our gloptometers. So we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll dive into all the no budget bullshit that he is Fire Maidens of Outer Space. Keith, come on. My answer is final. Guys, guys, come on. It's time to start the record. What, what are you doing? Keith won't start the record until we offer him free breakfast for life. Or. Any other commensurate course. You're making it sound unreasonable. All right, I know I'm going to regret asking this, but why? Because of HelloFresh. What's HelloFresh? Really, Noah? The first point of the year? You bet. Really? With HelloFresh, you wow. get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. And now... All subscribers get a free breakfast for life. That means you'll enjoy a totally free breakfast item with every single HelloFresh delivery. Yeah, and if HelloFresh will do that for me, it's the least that you two could do. I see. But I don't know, Eli. Do those delivery boxes have enough variety? They sure do. Dig into their biggest menu yet this year with over 45 dinner options to choose from weekly and even more market add-on items that suit any lifestyle. But Heath, have you actually tried HelloFresh or are you just in it for the free breakfast? I sure have tried it. I was a HelloFresh customer even before they were a sponsor. I love how the meals unpack into the fridge in seconds and then I can stop and start my deliveries on my schedule. All right, guys, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Go to HelloFresh.com slash awful free and use code awful free for free breakfast for life. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash awful free with code awful free. Okay, well, Heath, you can have my free breakfast. W will you show up to do the show now? Um, is Eli getting a free breakfast too? Uh, no. Then yes. Okay. Nice. Sweet. <laughs> All right, fellas, it's time for us to make our big space adventure picture. So what are you thinking? Well, you fellas know how Jupiter's 13th moon is partially obscured by dust clouds? Uh, sure. Yeah, I guess. Well, what if it were turned out that was because it was an Earth-like planet and Earthlings went there? Say, that's not bad. And when they get there, everyone is a real hot dame. How would that be possible? I, I don't know. They, they flew there from uh, Atlantis. 
Okay, that's incredibly stupid. You now, hear how Bill, stupid. Bill, we, we, we said yes to your boring idea about planets or whatever. Let Mike say his piece. Thank you. Anyway, hot dames, all of them, and, and lusting for the flesh of Earthmen, desperate for the Earthmen, their flesh, needing it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yawning it. Okay, that's... That's not a plot. You didn't describe a plot. I, I don't know. I, I actually kind of like it. Well, thank you. Also, though, I'm not done. Also, there's a a, cre- a creature just just watching, watching and lusting as well, but never able to touch. Oh, no. Oh, no. No matter how much he wants to touch, he can only watch me and the space ladies. Only watch. Okay, now I'm in. Yeah, me too. It's bad now. It is. <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to start off in Los Alamos, New Mexico. But don't worry, we're not going to be there for multiple seconds or anything. (laughs) Nope. New Mexico. Nope. Wait, never mind. New York. (laughs) And we're not going to New York. So this is so fucking silly. So we start off with this stock footage of an airplane taking off. It says Los Alamos, New Mexico. Then we see the same plane over New York, and it's like New York City. And then the plane lands ultimately in London. (laughs) Wait, no. Three-hour layover now. Shit. I don't know why we put this in the movie. This is the film (sighs) version of shitting your pants at the beginning of your lyrical dance routine. It's like, (laughs) no, no, no. So yeah, so the so, but we get credits, we get opening credits over the airplane. They don't have enough airplane footage to finish the credits, so they start looping it at a certain point, hoping we won't notice. They do. They also warn us that all characters in space are fictitious, and I wrote in my notes, I mean, not not all characters in space. <laughs> <laughs> all yours, maybe, but I like the music was just telling me like aeroplanes like the yeah. music and it kind of fit the rest of the music makes no sense ever for the rest of the movie but right this moment i was like okay yeah oh but podcast listener we get a cut inside the airplane for a second <gasps> did you see how fucking luxurious airplanes oh, used the to be fucking the love seat that the guy's four sitting on? seats on the entire Come plane on. each one the size of a goddamn lazy boy well, everyone's right, but- just smoking into the face of a baby it was a better time <laughs> Well, they, that's the thing. Just as I'm writing in my notes, like, man, air travel back then looks really good. Then the dude lights a cigarette, and I'm like, oh, right, right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they also show us the cockpit, and there's, like, three pilots in there, and, like, co-co-co-pilot seems to be hand-cranking the airplane forward yeah, to- with some sort of device. Yeah, no, you said they had to use to do the aft rudder by hand. That I did not know about. <laughs> Yeah, so then we get this hyper jingoistic opening narration over all of this, right? Where it's like, in the interest of peace for all mankind, the two greatest nations in the world, the United States and the United Kingdom, have come together for a secret outer space plan. Right? Yeah. This is plan 13 to explore outer space. Possibly worse than Plan 9 from Outer Space. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe as much as four times worse. It's right It's right there. Well, four. So, <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> Occasionally. So eventually we watch the plane land, right? So that we'll know how that dude got to the ground later. Because we're on the how plane. How did they get on the ground? <laughs> yeah. We have our, our main character, Luther Blair. He's the one who's been on this plane the whole time. He he deboards the plane right onto the fucking tarmac, and he's picked up at the London airport. We know that it's the London airport because there's a very large sign that just says London airport that we pan <laughs> away from. Yeah, fuck, boss. We uh, used up our entire movie's budget on uh, walking around that park, which will make up the rest of the entire fucking movie. What do we do for London airport? Just write a big sign on yes. cardboard that says London airport. It'll be great. <laughs> And it pans over to very much not an airport. <laughs> no, it's like a fucking library. It's my library is what it is in no, New Jersey. Some guy shows up to pick him up and he's like, hello, found a spot right at the front of London Heathrow. Yes, That's where I right. parked, <laughs> which is a small house, as you can see. Let's go. Is, yeah, exactly. As you can see, it's, it's a, a two it's family a home. It's a duplex. Here, this yeah. London Heathrow. You want to drive airport. on roads for a while now? Yeah, they will. 
so many shots of them driving. We watch everything for so long, but there are four different, like they show up from the left and drive to the right shots. It's like a Mario level at a certain point. <laughs> well, you know, at this time you had to let everyone jump out of their seats because they thought the car was coming for them and then they oh, had to okay, get settled right. back no, in fair. when they realized it wasn't. God. And we're in the UK. You want to settle us in on the, the crazy wrong side stuff. I sure. Obviously, yeah. Right. Um, ease our way into it. So yeah, but ultimately they arrive in an observatory. So we go, they go into the telescope. The guy's looking through the telescope. It's the middle of the fucking day, right? So I want him to take his eye back and it's just on fire, right? Yeah. <laughs> that That's was nothing. The sun. That's nothing. <laughs> I just now realized you can't do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That does, that all tracks. Question. Mm -hmm. Can they not get a little bendy part for the eyepiece so that you don't actually have to like look directly up mambo he's, into the he's looking straight up he's got his whole neck crate up yeah man they have mirrors <laughs> that's what I, okay so i was like i don't i don't know the mirrors. science of this but i feel like a mirror would do it right just <laughs> angle it i feel like someone figured that out along the lines yeah but fuck yeah when the part of space exploration was just a guy going okay so here's what i'm fucking seeing yeah and everyone was like yep we're doing science together all right here we go no computers or impartial data reading needed. <laughs> <laughs> they light a cigarette in the middle. One guy lights a cigarette and I'm just like, oh God, in front of the telescope, the other guy lights a pipe. I'm like, ah, fuck. <laughs> I, guess it I wanted someone to descend from the ceiling, just hot boxed inside a space helmet. Oh, okay. I get it. You're, just, <laughs> you're all going to die. And also we're in an actual observatory, right? Obviously. And it is so poorly mic'd and echoey and loud. You can hear traffic driving by outside. <laughs> Fucking rules. <laughs> also, there's just this great moment where he goes, did, they're talking about the space thing, right? Because they're going to go to this place in Jupiter. And he goes, did you check the colors? And the guy holds up <laughs> what I eventually realized was a spectrograph. Mm -hmm. But a solid minute of me just being like, there's a ruler. Yep. It's a ruler yeah. Well, it's of two rulers. And yes, they two, <laughs> two rulers. They each have their own ruler. Yeah. Ruler colors are correct for space. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So, but now what they found here, what they're discussing is that they've discovered the 13th moon of Jupiter. God, that sounds so quaint. We have 95 and counting now. But back then, they only knew about 12 of them. So they're like, we found a 13th moon of Jupiter. Now, that would be Lita. Its diameter is 13.5 miles. Doesn't really work for this movie, but they didn't know that. We'll be fair. Long tail. Long yeah. tail. <laughs> but, they, but they found this 13th moon of Jupiter that looks an awful lot like Earth. So they checked the spectrographs and they're like, hey, it looks like we could go there. You, get, you think you could be ready to go in a week? Yeah. yeah, one of them's like, like, yeah, no, that's about, that's a proper amount of time to set up for a space mission to Jupiter. A to week? Jupiter? Yeah. No problem. Yeah, he's like, when's the best time to leave? The other guy's like, hold on, let me check the typewriter. And he's like, click, 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 click. One week, nailed it. Yes. So there was some sort of math in that typewriter, I guess. Yep, yep. And then they announced that it'll be three weeks in space. Yes. Again, I don't know my astronomy, but I feel like that's low. <laughs> For any of the planets. Three weeks feels low. For the closest yes, planet. Jupiter. Definitely more than a three week travel time. Yeah, no, that's, I feel like that's about 28 times as fast as we could get to Jupiter today for a flyby, right? Like if you wanted to slow down enough to stop, it would be right. a hell of a lot longer than that. Slam a robot into its surface. In, yeah, in we could do that 20. 28 times there, three weeks. Yeah, exactly. Also, they very casually suggest, he's like, yeah, no, let's go check it out. It's only a fucking fortnight long trip. Why not? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, there could be humans on that planet. And I wrote in my notes, I mean, not humans, right? <laughs> and and I would just like to say for the record now, I will be incorrect. Yeah, there yes. will be no, you are humans all that together. on that planet. <laughs> I was like, so like humans who snuck out. And yes, it turns out that's, <laughs> yes. that's the yes. plot later. <laughs> so get ready for that. And then we get... The single funniest thing in the history of film. I, I know I've said that before, but I take all of those times back because this is where he buzzes for his assistant. <laughs> That's the best. She, she walks in for the rest of the movie. The rest of the film. It is insane. This is the part that was so hard to believe wasn't parody, right? Because what happens is he buzzes his secretary in. She comes in. 
She takes a note and then she leaves. This takes seven and a half goddamn minutes. She, so we watch her walk cool. in. Then we watch her drag a chair into place. So many it's obstacles. The <laughs> there's gates. She has yes, to push a, a button, gate. enter a, there's a padlock on the chair to sit in it. <laughs> and and that, this was only as small as seven and a half minutes because when he buzzes for her, She's right fucking there. So she's like, come yes. on, man. I'm right. He, yeah. He I've been, I'm standing on this catwalk. To you yes. told me to just stand on this catwalk and wait for a buzz. I don't know. I've been telling you, you just look at me and say, come here and I'll, I'll do that. I'll take notes or whatever. It's so silly. And we watch her come down for seven and a half minutes. Finally, she makes her way down. Everyone's 36 years older. And he's like, <laughs> take a letter. We're going to space. <laughs> Yes, it's the 19 end. fucking words. I went back and counted. It was 19 words he had to say to her. And I'm like, the whole time, I'm like, please tell me she walks all the way back up there and we watch. Please tell. And they do. Yes, she it's does. seven and a half minutes back up. Too. She goes up there. She assembles an Ikea desk on yes, the exactly. and, <laughs> but with it. So but she weird. doesn't have the Allen wrench. She's using a fingernail no, to do she it. She has to walk back down, yeah. <laughs> forge an Allen wrench. <laughs> this is the best part. So... The reason we watch her walk away is so that one of the scientists can make a lewd comment about her because she's a woman in this movie. But we watch the sexual energy dissipate, right? Because what's supposed to happen is she walks out of the room, click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. You think that Jupiter ladies will be as hot as that one? But what actually happens is click, clack, click, clack, click, clack. Twenty minutes of sound effects later, he's like, "So you think this? Uh, yes, Jupiter uh, the, people will be the as Jupiter hot as, ladies are as hot as my secretary. She's like three feet away still. I can't do the fucking just. <laughs> I know that the sexual harassment culture is pretty normalized, but she's just looking into my eyes right now as I say this. We should also point out that this is Higgins, right? So this is Blair and Higgins. Higgins at this point seems to be thinking he should have a British accent. He will stop thinking that very soon. So, all right, now we're going to cut to stock footage of the V2 rocket. Mm -hmm. We'll be getting plenty of use out of that. We cut to the ship's interior where we've got Blair, Higgins, and three other guys in white coveralls. White coveralls, fucking open office plan in this spaceship. They re really have room to walk around. Let me tell you. Ping pong table. It's nice. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> and then the guys, this Blair says, let's, all right, everybody, let's synchronize our space watches. <laughs> okay. This was almost my best worst that they just keep saying space everything. Yes. <laughs> space yes. objects. Everything else. It's space. the best. Lunch. <laughs> yeah. I would like space travel not to start the same way as our podcast with a five count. I think that's important. Yeah, right. that they yeah, have a, exactly. And then he goes, everybody ready to go? And they go, yep. And that's fucking it. I wrote in my notes, I need you guys to be sharing so much more information yes, than you. are you ready? And yes. <laughs> Yeah. Eh. All right. But but ultimately, eh is good enough. So Blair tells the table dildo that they're ready to take off. Yeah. They, they respond, we're going to count in in one minute. And I wanted one guy to be like, well, technically, then you're already counting. Shut the fuck up, Myron. OK, you know what we meant. <laughs> we watch. They're like, we'll start the countdown in a minute. And we just watch a minute tick off of a <laughs> clock. Oh, I thought maybe you guys had stuff to do. The movie like forgot that they could just start wherever they want. It was like, oh, uh, we're, it's okay. It's going to be 90 seconds before I even start. Okay. Counting. A minute. That's fine. How long could a minute? Just everybody wait. Possibly uh, be. You want to buzz we'll just... Janet down? <laughs> well, she's not going to make it in a minute. Our rocket will be in space by the time yeah, she right. fucking gets down here. We should have just started counting at 70 seconds. Well, that would have been stupid. Now, okay, I see. I see why we did it. So not, you know, you do 60 and then you're like 70 again or 50 and you forget. Right. Like, now again. is it 10? Do you it's, pause? We want to be exact, to right? Get Janet Obviously. down here. We, set, we synced our space watches and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but ultimately they do get to the 10 count. The guy counts down to 10 pretty fucking quick. He seems to be in a hurry. He knew that minute wait was too long and not suspenseful. Yeah. And then they launch. We get a lot of stock footage of the V2 rocket, which is honestly the most interesting thing in the movie. I'm not going to complain about that. Feels like cheating to take a 1965 audience and be like, huh? Remember? We yeah. fire rockets into space sometimes now. Right, Isn't this the one right. we like stole from the Germans after the war? Yes. Yeah. Sure is. Cool. They weren't using cool, it. Cool, cool, cool. No. <laughs> so, 
So then we get a belated establishing shot of Mission Control, right? We're apparently at the American British Astronomical Station in England. Again, a very large sign informs us of this. Mm -hmm. We cut inside. We we see, I, I'm sorry, this is such a weird thing to bring up, but I am fascinated by the Coke machine that they walk by. The Coke machine? That can't have been an official sponsorship, right? I, probably There's not. no way <laughs> Fire Maidens of Outer Space was like, hand me out. So the real star of this movie is sexual harassment, but a close second is big fucking <laughs> signs. And what if I told you we would write, have a Coke and just have it be at the center <laughs> of a shot in a way you could never really think about anything, anything ever else again. I promise. It'll just be you thinking, have a Coke. The only thing that got more product placement was Chesterfield cigarettes. Well, yeah. <laughs> so it was that right. and Coca-Cola. But yeah, but so they passed this Coke machine, go into the mission control room and learn that the launch was successful. Then we cut to the ship in outer space. And I love this so goddamn much. Blair turns to the other guys and he's like, well, there's the Earth. And, and we look out the window and we see Earth. And I'm like, yeah, man, they all knew what that was. <laughs> <laughs> and one guy goes, I've always wanted to see the Earth from space. And you see this beautiful moment where like someone very clearly thought it was their turn to talk, but there's nothing to say to that. And so the rest of the cast are just like, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, no, we all did. I, would, I, I think everyone probably what somebody see would that. say. In space, and then they passed the moon, right? They passed. The, it's been a minute. I did the math on this. They're going about seventeen million miles an hour. <laughs> oh yeah, no, they really. <laughs> also, based on the shadows, they're headed directly for the sun right now at yeah mm -hmm. Mach twenty two thousand one hundred and sixty four. But don't worry, it's about to get exciting because at this point they start passing through an asteroid field. And watching 1956 asteroid graphics, that's interesting for a good three minutes, right? We can get three minutes out of that. Yeah. Well, we yeah. learned about the uh, magnetic gyro Yes, device. well, yeah, you can't yeah. have that on during an asteroid attack. And if, if you're wondering, there's uh, two levers that control literally everything on the spaceship. Yep. Both <laughs> levers down is magnetic gyro on. Yes. Yeah. Right. But it, all the way down. If it's if it's yeah. if they're part way down, we'll find out later that's landing. But yes. Then you're <laughs> just slowing yourself down and not getting to the sun as quickly because Jupiter's on the other side. And you have to go past the sun as the most Obviously, direct route. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, both down for magnetic gyro. Yeah. Even though we did establish that Jupiter's moon was at perigree earlier. It do, just don't, don't, they didn't know that word. So, and I, I know that they, they probably meant gyro in, in terms of gyroscope, but I was picturing a large magnetic, delicious Greek meat sandwich. Um, and they can't make me stop. Legally, they cannot make me stop. So, <laughs> but yeah, so we watched the asteroids for quite a fucking while. And then, we just don't anymore. They're done, right? Because they're they're like, oh, here comes an asteroid field. Speed up. And they do. And they're fine. Yeah, it's like watching little kids play. You ever watch little kids play Spaceman? And they're like, oh, no, here comes some bad aliens. Shoot them. Pew, 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 pew. And then there's that pause where the children are like, fuck, three-act structure. Should have done a three-act yeah. structure. <laughs> <laughs> Also, you guys know how to do a herald. <laughs> <laughs> also, at one point, one of the guys, they, they're like, ah, the ice is unbreakable. And then apropos of nothing, one of the guys who has not spoken yet just very loudly announces to the entire room, the ice machine is like my wife. And you sort of hear everyone be like, yeah, Larry, we know. All right. What? Okay. <laughs> cold. <laughs> cold. She's cold. Get it? Cold. Like I ice. hate her. No. Yeah, we we get it, man. All right. Well, after that thrilling asteroid scene, I feel like everybody needs a minute to let their heart rate return to normal. So we're going to pause for a quick break, but we're back in a flash with even more Fire Maidens of Outer Space. I don't know why you're even bothering. I'll show you. Hey, Heath, what's all the racket? Who, who's this? Oh, hey, Noah, this is Bitter Betty. Bitter Betty? Yep, Bitter Betty. I'm here to tell Heath that his New Year's goal of getting into better shape ain't gonna happen. You don't know. I'm gonna. Oh, I know. I know. You see, it's spite like this. It's gonna drive me forward, I think. Well, Heath, if you're looking to feel better and exercise more in the new year, why not try FitBod? What's FitBod? Come on, second point of the year goes to Bitter Betty? 
That's right. Eat it. You eat it. FitBot is a fitness app that creates completely personalized workouts that adapt as you improve. Whether you're a seasoned gym goer or just starting your fitness journey, FitBot will push you to make progress. It's like having your own personal trainer, but better. It's cheaper. You can work out from anywhere with or without equipment, and it's easy to build a custom fitness plan that works for you. Psh, working out with an app? That'll never work. It can too, Bitter Betty. FitBot helps you learn new movements the right way with over a thousand demonstration videos, and it adapts as you improve, so each workout will be challenging and push you to make progress. Yeah, I bet you haven't even tried it. I have indeed, Bitter Betty. I love that it adapts to the stuff I have to work out with, so whether I'm at a full gym or in my living room, I know I've got a challenging workout at the ready. All right, I'm sold, Noah. Even if she isn't sold, where do I sign up? Add FitBod to your workout essentials. Join FitBod today to get your personalized workout plan. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free at FitBod.me slash GAM. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash GAM. All right. Thanks, Noah. Couldn't spring for FitBod.com, eh, FitBod? Not, not really worth the full $12 a Bitter year Bitter Betty, investment. be cool, please. Just saying spring for a Squarespace, FitBod. Careful, Captain. We're passing through an ice belt. Rust us to fall. Oh, <laughs> dang. This reminds me of my wife, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Captain. All clear. Well done, pilot. First drink is on me. All right. Now he's sounding like my wife. <laughs> huh. Okay. Huh. okay. Anyway, anyway uh, when we land, we'll need to put down the landing pad, set up gear, and report back to base. Yes, Captain. I hate my wife so fucking much. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And we're going to rejoin the action with Anderson calculating their route through space on graph paper with a ruler. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But like, don't you work that ahead of time? Instead right. of on the ship, you, you do that math. Or I feel like we'd figure out not paper and pencil before we'd figure out sure. flying to Jupiter. <laughs> Maybe. Okay, I was looking at this graph paper. There's like random just little circles out on one side of it. I think that's to represent potentially the asteroids, but they're just like random little circles. These are not plotted with any sort of accuracy at all. Also, the, the paper is all like crinkled up mm -hmm. and there's like a pack of cigarettes and like ashes on the paper. They're all smoking in this yeah, spaceship. Smoking. He draws a line with a ruler and then adds a different line without a ruler. Like There's different my, lines. There's different my dad lines. was shaking with rage at these bad measurements. <laughs> like nothing was working on this plan. Oh, see, I feel like all the dads of the world were like, that's right. I, I too could pilot a spaceship with a, with a straight edge and a, and a clean pencil. That's all I need <laughs> to make it a Jupiter, let me tell you. Oh, that's what he was saying until he saw that non-rulered line, and then he went nuts. <laughs> yeah, right. What the fuck was that all about? Hypotenuse. Yeah, Blair's working the levers. We got one dude shaving. For a while, I, was, I wrote my notes like, why? I hope we get to watch this guy shave for 45 seconds. Oh, good. You know, we watch them sleep in the movie. We watch them yep. shave in the movie. We watch a second person <laughs> shave in the movie. Yes. It's like a long shaving scene. And then he's like, let me go <laughs> for a minute now. I need to shave. <laughs> Hold on. I need to plug it back in. It's a, uh, okay. <laughs> I have the wrong cord. Okay. Fun, not fact. So I have an IMDb Pro account, which lets you see all of the fun facts that have ever been brought up, even the ones that are now deleted from the main page. So the original fun fact on the IMDb for this movie was, this is the first appearance of a cordless razor in cinema. And the comment that got it deleted is, no, it's not. That's a product they're using. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> So, yeah, so we get this incredibly long morning ablutions scene, right? But then they start coming up on the 13th moon. They think it's behind clouds, so they can't tell for sure if there's a planet there. <laughs> hey, Chris, <laughs> check your graph paper. And he does. He's yes. like, yeah, no, the uh, the hypotenuse of the algebra homework Eli didn't do says that the moon's right there. So fucking <laughs> let's do it. So they enter the planet's atmosphere. Now, we should point out, we've seen their spaceship several times against black construction paper with holes poked in it, right? And it's always the V2 rocket with the thrusters going. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> the movie 
I think, believes that when you go to Jupiter, for example, with a spaceship, you're burning fuel the entire, like you're holding the gas the whole, pedal yeah. and you're just like shooting yourself. Yes, right, because you have to pull down on the gas. I wonder how many of those Mario mushrooms they're going to need to do that. They probably got the infinite one and they just hit the button. I guess that explains the 22,000, the Mach 22,000 speed that they managed, I guess. <laughs> but yeah, but now we should also put it like this. This includes when you're landing. Right, the thrusters go in full blast the other way as you land. Fuck it, boss, we keep taking off again. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to see that in a minute. But, but before we do, so they enter the planet's atmosphere with their thrusters going full blast, and they get a radio signal. Right, it goes, and I quote: "Calling the spaceship, report name and destination immediately." Okay, destination's an easy answer because it's here. Right, the here, <laughs> yes. But the, the the greatest goddamn line of the movie follows that where he says, you are under our space control. I feel like control is fine, Chris. We don't need to add space to it. Space control. Every planet is in space. Like Earth is in space. I don't, nobody would say space there. That's insane. <laughs> it's my new favorite example of movie stupid. That's yes. just like saying time space at the beginning of everything you ever do because we're in yeah. time space, space time. <laughs> Sorry, Noah, it's your new favorite space example. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Time space. And they respond that they are a friendly scientific exploration. I wrote in my notes, smart. You add the friendly as opposed to, you know, a hostile scientific exploration. <laughs> hey, side note, listener, they are not on a friendly scientific exploration. No, nope, they've got guns. Yeah. <laughs> so many guns. And he, he forgets to say friendly, friendly. He's like, we're doing friendly. Si <clears throat> Sorry, friendly. Friendly science, right? Just normal. Just I, we were doing normally friendly Science. So yeah, so they they land. Now the landing is just the V two takeoff footage, but in reverse. <laughs> that which looks great. Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> they land on the planet. They all light cigarettes in celebration. They pass the same tree again as they're parking. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then so and and they ask one of the guys. They're like, "Hey man, check the atmosphere. How is it?" And he's like, "Wow, it's exactly like Earth's." And he's like, "Oh wow, is that because we couldn't afford spacesuits for this movie?" And they're like, "Yep, sure is. Yep, sure is because of that." <laughs> so, so then they, they so they set off onto this alien planet that looks exactly like Southern California. Interestingly enough, yep, sure does. We have a long pan of it where it's like, "Huh? Look at how alien Southern California looks." <laughs> Yeah, the, you can't tell what the actors were instructed to do because they're half of them are doing like, my gosh, it's just like Earth there. And half of them are doing like, oh, a it's new a world. Planet. Yeah. And they were just doing porn or they're about to do porn. So I yes. think that's the confusion. All right. Interesting. Well, they also are all wearing, and we've mentioned the guns a couple of times now, but we should talk about the size of the, these guns are not like, in a small holster, like no. a picture gun. They're giant fucking Jack Nicholson's Joker wants to shoot down the bat plane gun. No, they're, well, they're like the opposite of a holster. It's like a riddle to get into the holster. It's like an escape room to get your gun out. I almost went with best worst holsters in this movie. Yeah. Okay. They run at this moment too because they look out into the trees of the new moon they're on and they see a signal yes that says head for the trees from i guess the jupiterians theoretically so they run ac across this like park in southern california and they don't know what running is i guess in 1956 no, did he, we learn before between then and now what normal leg movement is yes i don't because because humans have been running for hundreds of that's what I know. I, I would have just seen like it would be different yes. between 1956 and now. You can't just hunt and gather with walking and weird, crazy leg serpentine that they do here. I don't you know. You guys need to check yourselves, okay? This is before the American Fitness Challenge. This was. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have flexible boys and girls just exploring the American landscape we, like we have today, okay? This was the peak of physical fitness in 1965. Right. No. You had 56. cigarettes for breakfast. 56. Then you were no illusions at 13, and then you marched out into the planet. Yeah. No, this was like four out of five PE teachers recommend Chesterfields. At, at this right. Moment, yeah. so. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. These guys have been having their face smoked in since they were babies. So Exactly. Thank you. 
But yeah, but we have to talk about this beacon too, right? So they get out of the plane, they look over and there's this light doing Morse code. So not only do these aliens speak English, but they have Morse fucking code. And the code says, head for the trees at the signal. Now, there are trees in every single direction from where they <laughs> stand, right? Uh, luckily, they picked the right trees. They do. They could. They picked the correct trees. Yep. There's also no signals. So they just, they're like, so you figure now we should start running? They're like, well, yeah, might as well. Yeah. So yeah, so they strafe their way across the field. They come to the to the light that, that had been Morse coding at them, and it happens to be a statue of a very sexy woman. Dibs on fucking the statue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, guys. Hey, podcast listener. I can't emphasize how much time and how instantly they all start sexually harassing this statue. Right? Like <laughs> that was not an exaggeration. Thirteen-year-olds unwatched at a museum would be like, "All right, relax, man." Is these guys? They're just like, "Haba haba." Oh man, now look at the oh, look at the stones on her. If it blew up and the aliens were like, "All right, that's like the ninth spaceship of humans we've gotten with the exploding sexy lady statue," I yeah, thought this was gonna be harder. I gotta tell you. <laughs> I also love this throwaway line we get from Stan Hope. He goes. The vegetation is similar to our planet. <laughs> yes, remarkably so. <laughs> and the other actors look at him like, yeah, man, it's fucking California. Don't yes. say that. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Yeah. So, yeah. So they, they, they pick their jaws up from the hot statue lady and they're like, well, I guess that's it for our first day of space exploration. Let's go back to the ship and knock off. All right. right? Found statue and rubbed against it. Check, check. Call it a day. That was the <laughs> space mission yes. of space fucking statue of space fuck. We give the Mars rover too much shit because really these guys got a lot less done than that little robot. Is oh, done. yeah. Good for them. <laughs> but but hold on. Not so fast because as they're walking back, they hear a woman scream. Now, it's supposed to be the classic. We hear a woman scream. We run and, and, and we find her. But these idiots making this fucking movie have this poor actress scream I'm going to say conservatively 17 fucking times. It ruled because you can hear the actress being like, <laughs> okay, that's enough, right? I, no, yes, no, she's more. run out of <sighs> ways to scream. Ah, <sighs> I don't know. Oh, <laughs> I was really hoping the aliens were going to kill all these idiots with like old white guy traps. Like, like yeah. first the statue and then the screaming lady chivalry. I'm cutting before I measure. I, I wonder if that was like two pieces of wood that aren't plumb and flush and they all freak out and run after it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I could probably throw out this half done pencil, right? There's not I'll no need to kill you. Oh, I'm in a trap. <laughs> I fell right into it. Tiger pit. So, yeah. So, <laughs> so, so they run up and they see that there's this woman and she's being harassed by a guy in a gimp suit, right? And there's this discussion for a minute where they're like, so you guys want to just um, see how this plays out or should we, we do something? We watch? Maybe, maybe. And what the boss is like, all right, let's not get it. This is exactly what happens. I want to be very clear that there's <laughs> nothing that happens in between these words and these actions. He goes, let's not get involved unnecessarily. And then he fires a gun at the animal that is attacking her. Well, now, now it wasn't quite that fast, right? Because he's like, fire a warning shot. He fires a oh, warning shot. Oh, that's right. He fires a gun in the air. Yes. And, and then they all look at him. First he stands his ground. You're right. Yes, exactly. They all, the, the thing looks at him and then he's like, all right, now just shoot it. Now, <laughs> now just shoot, shoot it. it the God, that was, we gave him like a count of zero to yes. not be there anymore. So yeah, fucking shoot that thing in the goddamn head. Maybe it's the president. We have no idea. <laughs> While the creature is holding this lady right next to him. So they're like, yes, right. I, I wanted her to be like, ow, you fucking shot me. All right? of you missed him and shot me. <laughs> Fuck. Why did you bring guns? You said you were a friendly scientific the exploration. <laughs> Yeah, so but the but the monster growls off. He's very upset at getting shot, and the and the woman is the beautiful woman is saved. She's in a ridiculously short dress. Again, you're somebody's twelve year old boner did the costume design for this film, right? For sure, or whatever age. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, no, somebody's boner definitely Thank did you. the uh, Keith's boner wrote this movie. All right, now we can say it. Now it's better. Fuck, I don't know why I talk sometimes. Shit. <laughs> But yeah, but he comes up and she like very clearly wants to fuck him. She beckons him forward. All five guys 
do some version of like as close as you can say to I would like to have sex with her in 1956 cinema. Hamana, hamana, hamana. Except for Anderson, again, who breaks the moment by being like, so we're all going to fuck her, right? And they're like, God damn, Anderson, man. Dude, it's 96. Just be cool. And he's like, all right. Well, so yes. Just so you guys know, I don't mind going later. I want to go third. <laughs> third. Interesting. I'm a third guy. I'm a third man. He's a third guy. All right. And that's Heath speaking, by the way. That's not an Anderson bit. That's just Heath letting you, the podcast listener, know. This is my new voice. <laughs> well, that's actually going to come up. We're going to have to decide that, right? Because they follow her and they get to this like building and she's like, come on inside. And Blair, the the like main guy, he's like, all right, me and Larson will go in. You guys, the rest of you guys, you stay out here uh, and uh, you get sloppy thirds, fourths and fifths. <laughs> yeah. I love this. Yeah. It's like, all right, here's the plan. I get to space fuck the space lady, space first, right? <laughs> but but uh, also Larson, right? And he, he looks at Larson and Larson's like, lukewarm at best on this plan. He's like, all right. Well, so Larson is the one who hates his wife. His whole personality so far has been like looking at things going like, oh, it's prickly, like my wife, you know? It's just uh. like, so Larson probably needs fucked by a space lady, right? <laughs> It's like how when you're at a bachelor party and there's a strip club, like they do the bachelor, but then the second funniest person to get a lap dance is like the guy who's been married for 36 years because yeah. you're like kind of destroying his marriage. It's like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but but so Blair and Larson go into the Jovian castle. The other three characters are Higgins, Stanhope and Anderson. They're going to form the B team and wait. Uh, at the back. So they go into this room. There's a painting where a chick has her, her nipples showing because they're allowed to do it if it's art. Ooh. <laughs> and Blair goes, wow, well, this room looks late Minoan. And just then a guy in a robe shows up and he goes, actually, it's Atlantean. <laughs> idiot. Hello. Sorry, I Hi. opened with Sorry. Atlantean idiot. Hello. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> oh, my God. OK, welcome to New Atlantis, though. And this is their civilization that they <laughs> they they moved from Atlantis on Earth, yes. right? That's what they're saying. Yep. Yep. So Atlantis on Earth. No need to explain. Going underwater, and they were like, "How do we solve this? Fly to Jupiter? Fly to Jupiter? Yeah, well, that's to the, the first, thirteenth moon of Jupiter. First yes. idea, best idea." He yes. also says that the painting is his grandma. Yes. Am I wrong? Yeah, he does. Nope. I was he does. hot grandma, and no one's like. Hey, why is your grandma got her tits out in this picture you have of her on your wall? <laughs> hey, listen, that's nobody's business. <laughs> I don't know why I talk all the time. So many times. <laughs> Hi, grandma. So, but yeah, so this guy is the lone male survivor of Atlantis. And, it, but it's not just him. It's also like 13 beautiful women that also live there. They're all his daughters. Or at least that's the term that they use. No explanation needed or given, everybody. We're all Got it. established. Yep. yep. Wink. Yeah, and, and the guy says this character's name is Process. Process. I can't tell if it's Process and they're pronouncing it weird because they're old timey, but yeah. Or if it's Process, which is fucking insane. Right. <laughs> I think so it's Process. They, it's spelled Process in the uh, IMDb page, but yeah, they pronounce it Process throughout. So this is process. And he says to Blair, he's like, oh, you know, the the creature must be destroyed, but it is indestructible. And I'm like, well, that's then what the fuck are you even talking about? What are we even doing here? Well, I shot it earlier and it seemed bothered by that. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I'm from Atlanta, so I don't fucking know. I'm <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> I've been trying to throw a rock at it real hard. So I guess indestructible is a real different definition to yeah, me than relative, it is for you. Relative term. But yeah, but then... He says, Hestia, my daughter that you rescued, she now belongs to you, said the writer's 12-year-old boner. Sure did. Yeah. And then we get, I believe, this civilization's early sexual move, which is the shoulder touch, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she puts his hand on her shoulder like, no, I'm the one that you own now. 
as if to demonstrate. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. You're you're all dressed the same as all the other yeah. <laughs> daughters. So like, thank you for clarifying. Again, this feels like the porn thing. Director guy was like, do some shoulder stuff, shoulder touch. <laughs> yes. Everybody's like, all right, man, you're a shoulder guy. All right. Do we have to get those licenses if she touches my shoulder? No. Okay. <laughs> Good. We'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and then as if that wasn't porny enough, all of the women start to do a sexy dance for them. Well, um, well, what passed for a sexy dance in 1956 that could get past the sexy space dance? Space dance. Thank you. Space Maybe. sexy space dance. Space ballet? sexy space, space ballet? dance. Sure. This might be too niche, but you know when you go to like a concert, like a dance recital. And there's the little kids and the sugar plum fairy plays and three-year-olds come out and everyone's like, oh, and then the teenagers do their thing. And you're like, I don't know these women. This is weird. (laughs) That's how this dance feels. It's like, I bet you guys have a lot of fun at your dance class that you're all in together. I shouldn't be here. (laughs) I don't want to be here. I don't think you guys think this is like good. So (laughs) what am I doing here? Yeah. Okay. I felt like the dancers had the same vibe as you just now. So like you and the audience and the dance, they were like all in a fight with each other. Kind of. Yeah, sure. Like they were angrily dancing next to each other as best they could. Occasionally trying to like upstage the other one. There's one lady who was just stand in corner lady. And she's just furiously sulking off to the side, moving her hand once in a while. Love it. it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, and so they're doing their, their dance. The guys are drinking wine process is, is liquoring them up a little bit, but it's sinister wine. So it's, they're passing out as they drink. There will never be a reason for this, by the way, they just do. They just, for some reason they need to roofie their guests because they don't, try to escape until much later in the movie. No. There was no reason to keep them there unconscious. They would have very happily stayed and watched your beautiful daughters do a sexy dance for them. Yep. But for some reason, they drug them. So they fall asleep. Hess just starts making out with Blair once he's unconscious. Which, again, I think he would have done that conscious. I think we've already established that. 100% would have gotten, would have gotten conscious consent. Yeah. So meanwhile, we cut to the guys outside. Now, before Blair and Larson went in, Blair said, hey, if we're not back in 30 minutes, you guys go back to the ship, right? We cut back to them and they're like, it's been a lot past 30 fucking minutes. Do you guys want to go back to the ship like you said? Or what are we thinking here? I want to space fuck. I said thirds. I called thirds. (laughs) It's weird because (laughs) the vibe was space fuck. And then he was like, 30 minutes, go back to the ship. So... What if the space fucking's just really good and now we're going to miss out on like a really long 45 minute space fuck because we went back to the ship. What do you, what do you, what's the vibe? What are you guys thinking? Right. Maybe they killed him. So, so yeah, but ultimately they decide to head back to the ship. We, we, we see the gimp monster watching them. They, they check back in with mission control when they get in. Yeah, but they don't tell them what's happening. Like like teenagers who are trying to clean up the house from the party the previous yes. night. It's like, so how are things going on the planet? Normal. Good. No, it's everything's fine. How are you? Not not a space fucking a lady statue <laughs> and a lady and there's not a monster <laughs> who wears a sweatshirt. We're not missing two crewmates. I bet you're missing two crewmates. Is <laughs> Yeah, the one guy says to Higgins, he's like, hey, should we tell the control that two of our crewmates are, are missing? And, he, and Higgins is like, no. I'm like, why would that be a question, let alone the answer be no? But that's for, for the purposes of this movie, that is what they do. It's a secret. They lie to the mission control and then everybody has another cigarette. Then we cut back to the New Atlantis compound or whatever. We see... Beautiful women changing clothes behind draped towels. Oh, yeah. They okay. Are. But there's nobody oh, no, like. They're naked behind those towels. <laughs> like, hey, yeah. hey, right. If only we was on the other side, they would have no clothes on. There's nobody watching them, though. So, like, right. they were holding up the towel because the camera in. <laughs> yeah. Because of the camera like the, in the movie. Yeah. Oh, because the terrifying director. <laughs> yeah. The camera, right. Probably. Right. Exactly. Okay. So, yeah, so, but we watched that for a second. Then we cut to Blair and, and Larson. They're, they're asleep in separate rooms in their shoes. Everybody in this fucking movie sleeps with their shoes on, apparently. 
the doors in this universe are like automatic window blinds, but they open with the Hitler salute. Yes, they do. They do open with the Hitler salute. Yeah, I feel like there'd be an, an awkward conversation at some point about those shades. <laughs> right. <laughs> Earthman, you called for me? Hey, Hester. Uh, Hestia. Oh, Hestia? Sorry, did you change it? Nope, it's Hestia. Right. Okay, yeah. S sorry, so it's about the shades? Ah, our auto shades. Yeah, yeah. So, weird thing, but the gesture that you use to open them? This one. Like this? Yep, yep, That that's the one. Just a heads up. When we get to Earth, you're not going to want to do that gesture. Oh. Really, Earthman, why? So, yeah, okay. Uh, there's this guy called Hitler. He was like a really bad king. And that was like his thing, that gesture. I see. And, and what did this evil king do? Oh, yeah, he killed like millions of people. Oh, and did your Americans stop him? Yes, yes, we did. Very, very proud moment. For all of us, we did stop him. Wow. The people he was killing must have been so grateful that you Americans swooped right in the moment the evil king started to kill them to save them all. But what is the matter, Earthman? Uh, yeah, okay. So, for, for clarity, we didn't exactly swoop right in, but eventually we got attacked by a, a different bad king, which made us at, at war with both of them. And then we did defeat Hitler after that. Oh, I see, Earthman. You did not know he was an evil king who wanted to kill these people. Uh, yeah, we knew. We knew. We definitely knew. But eventually, we got in there and we got him. So, Well, at least he and his people were defeated. That is right. Well, except for the ones that we hired for our space program. What? So is it Hester? Hestia. Hestia. Got it. Hestia? Hestia. Hestia. I know you can hear me. Hanston. <laughs> but yeah, so Hestia, that's the chick that uh, we met first, the one that he rescued from the creature. She wakes Blair up. He's got a big hangover, but she offers him a drink that cures hangovers, I guess. Yep. Which is nifty. It's like, might as well be Popeye spinach. And then he's like, da -da 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 -da. I'm yeah. fine. I'm not roofing anymore. <laughs> right. And now we should point out too that she has not said a word to this point, right? She screamed when the creature was in, but otherwise, other than that, she's been following him around silently. And the whole time we're like, all right, can she not talk? Or is this just what they expected of women in 1956? <laughs> the answer yes. is the latter. <laughs> yeah. It is the, yes. <laughs> Because he says, hey, wait, can you talk? And she's like, out on the balcony. They go out on the balcony and she just talks normal. So, yeah, she exposits, I should say. She explains the plot up to this point to him. Okay, I want to talk about this scene because it made me laugh so hard. <laughs> she's like, my father keeps us here. We are all his prisoners. Huh. And his exact response is, so what's the weather like on this place? Is it like hot um, <laughs> most of the time? Do you get, you know what I like is autumn. <laughs> you just ask about the seat. Fuck your face. Uh, I'm going to just said the thing about the slave. No, I was going to get, I was sort of preparing an answer about the slavery thing, but I just thought sort of I could kill some. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We have seasons. You go ahead now. Uh, you're, yeah, you guys do Halloween. Boring. That's a boring about conversation. Holidays. <laughs> Yeah, but she explains that all of the women are imprisoned by process and Blair tells him he wants to rescue her because she's a damsel in distress and she kisses him and assures him that it's still just act two. So, you know, not yet. I like that he says, I have a million questions, but I can only think of one. <laughs> and I was like, so, so you have one, right? I don't <laughs> think you have a million questions then. <laughs> if you can't think of something, you don't have it in your brain. Nope, so that's, that's not that's what you question. have. Thing. Yeah. I have a million questions. Here's the one I can think of, but here's the one I can't think of. <laughs> <laughs> Space questions. Turner Skiffenin. Brookchan Do you want to hear my answer that I can't think of? <laughs> so yeah, so so she leaves, and then a different girl comes to get him. This is Duessa. 
Ch- uh, Prasus comes over the radio and he goes like, hey, follow this other girl and come and talk with me for more plot stuff. Right, but it's not the radio. It's a loudspeaker, which feels weird. Yeah. Right? Just, sorry, um, mm-hmm. couple of announcements. Lunch today is <laughs> meatball surprise. Also, <laughs> I would like to do more exposition in the room. I knocked you out, so I feel like if I had more to say, I should have waited. Yes, right. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so he goes with her. Then we cut over to Larson, the other guy that's there. He's waking up all grumpily. There's like four beautiful women waking him up, and he's checking to make sure that they didn't steal his wallet and shit. Okay, this was was the porn for sure, right? (laughs) Like, this is a point for the porn thing? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're all waking him up and rubbing on him and everything, and he's like, all right, skedaddle, women, skedaddle. I wrote, this is like trying to wake Heath at a convention. (laughs) Isn't it, though? Why are you trying to wake me up? He... (laughs) Because you have the keys to the van. Right? That's why. <laughs> Where all the merch was. Why would you give me the keys to the van? Well, that's, that, that's, I, that's the real I, question. True. Yeah, Fair right. enough. No, that was on us. So, yeah, but he, but he's married, damn it. He doesn't want these succubuses to tempt him with their hedonistic ways. So he runs them all off. I love, yeah, he yells at them to go away. And then one of them is like, hey, man, why do you want the four of us to go away? And I was like, great question, Atlantis really lady. Really great question. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> But then he's like, am I being detained? And he's mad. And they're like, you you hear, yes, detained, but like, you know, good, you get the good way that we're talking about. <laughs> fuck you. It's so you know beautiful. You get, you get a libertarian to avoiding you. an orgy with four beautiful women. So I was like, okay, yeah, that's a fun way to end nice. that scene. <laughs> All idiot. Right. All right. Well, unfortunately, Hollywood discovered acts sometime after 1956. So I can't exactly wait for one of those to end before we take a break. So we're going to take one here. But first, let me give the non-segmented remainder of the movie the hard sell. Will anyone fuck anyone? Why did people bother to wake up in the 50s? Did they get polio just for a spot of variety? Find out the answers to these questions and a bunch of ones nobody would have bothered to ask when we return for the yada, yada, yada conclusion of... Fire Maidens of Outer Space. And then at three, I eat for one hour straight. So smart, just nonstop. Right? Exactly. Hey, guys, you're up early. You guys don't usually wake up till noon. Oh, Noah, that was the old us. The new us is up at 7 a.m. Yeah, I actually got up at five and came out of my room at 6.30. It's true, he did. Yep. And, And I assume these are your New Year's resolutions? We're not even getting started. Yeah. What about you, though? Do you have any New Year's resolutions of your own? As a matter of fact, I do, Heath. I'm going to stop wasting my money on my wireless bill by switching to Mint Mobile. What's Mint Mobile? It's one of my resolutions. Nailed it. Mint Mobile is here to rescue you with premium wireless plans for just $15 a month. 15 bucks a month? You're pulling my leg. No, that's my resolution. That's right. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for 15 bucks a month. Okay, Noah, but do I have to do some kind of weird number change or only text when the moon is full in Azerbaijan or something? Uh, no, all plans come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your phone number along with all your existing contacts. But have you actually tried it? I have. I switched my family over to Mint Mobile when they became a sponsor a few years ago, and I get the same great service for hundreds of dollars less. Exactly, which is why my New Year's resolution is a piece of cake. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just $15 a month, go to mintmobile.com slash gam. That's mintmobile.com slash gam. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash gam. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. All right, Noah. Well, um, congrats on your resolution, I guess. Thanks. Uh, So so sorry, did you say your resolution is pulling Eli's leg? Yeah, well, just harming in general. Okay. Doing mean codas this week. Yeah, well, um, I hate you. (laughs) (laughs) Human craft, do you hear me, human craft? Come in. Yes, this is the U.S. Exploria from the planet Earth. We come in peace. We are pleased to hear it, Earthlings. Do you come holstered? Uh, Sorry, what? Holstered in your rectum. We are a peaceful species, and despite our terrifying power and weaponry, we mean you no harm. This is why we will greet you the way you greet us, with our thumbs inside our own rectums. 
Or two fingers. Or two fingers, yes. Right. So, okay, just, just to make sure I understand you, the way your people show that you come in peace is to arrive with your thumb inside of your, your rectum? Or two fingers, yes. Uh, okay, well, well uh, okay, very well then. In the name of intergalactic peace, I shall come uh, holstered, as you say. <laughs> he was totally going to do it. I know. I heard him. I Sorry, heard what? Him. what? What are you? What are you talking Dude, about? I, I'm just. We're just fucking with you. Uh, why would you point your thumb up your ass? Why would that be a peace gesture? I, I don't know. You're aliens. You said it every fucking time. I can't get enough of it. Stand by for the landing coordinates. Yeah, but uh, wash your hands first, dude. I didn't do it yet. Mm, didn't you? No. Jerks. Yes. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action back in the ship where the Gimp monster is snort growling in the bushes nearby. Right? Um, the crew sees it. The creature is really bad at hiding, right? They, he never successfully <laughs> yeah. hides in the movie. I kept expecting for him to pop out of somewhere and, oh, we thought, but no, the entire time he's just like, Arr! and they're like, we see you, man. And he's like, Arr! Yeah. Arr! we do right though. Well, you're growling. He's growling and he just like falls out of the bushes as if an infomercial. And then he's like, all right, well, I'm out in the open. I can just walk in the open. <laughs> they saw me. Well, and, but, and the whole time he's doing that, you have the crew going, there's something out there, but it's hiding. I can't tell what <laughs> Glasses haven't been invented yet. So. And he's like, oh, I guess I'll slowly back into this bush again and that'll work. <laughs> yes. Nailed it. For my All next right. several scenes. Homer Simpson style. Yeah. Good job, creature. So they just, they give up looking for him, though. He's, he's too cleverly camouflaged. So they're like, oh, well, let's see if we can figure out where our crewmates are. Check the radio. And we're like, to see if the they're at the Sox game? What the fuck would the radio tell <laughs> Maybe you? Maybe they started a podcast. <laughs> Check and see if they started a podcast. Look yeah. And see. <laughs> so he's like, oh, no, that didn't help. He's like, okay, sweep the area with radar. Really? Come on, man. We know what radar is even now. <laughs> Why would what, do, Dude radar? We have dude radar is what you're saying? Well, turns out there are a lot of trees around us. Yeah. But Higgins ultimately decides that this is boring and they should go look for Blair and Larson. He tells everybody to gun up. It's time to go find Blair and Larson. In retrospect, wait 30 minutes and then go back to the ship was not a robust enough contingency yes. plan. Yes. So, yeah, so they so they they arm up, they set off, and we watch them walk around Southern California some more. <laughs> and we get the creature doing, he's having a slow day at work. He's just like, okay. Uh, pop up head from bushes and wheeze. Uh, number six. This is the sixth time I sh I'm supposed to do that. Yeah. And okay, nailed it. And he checks it off the list. Yep. Like that's a lot of his plan so far. That's pretty much the whole thing up to this point. Yeah, follow him around in the bushes and growl snort. So then we we check back in with Blair. He's still chatting with Process. Right. He comes back and he's like, and that's how we'll save New Atlantis. <laughs> I would have liked to have heard that part of the movie, but you know, what? it's fine. It's fine. From what? I understand you have to work in a whole other dance number after all. <laughs> okay. Again, this is porn, though. This is the porn that was missing. He was talking about them, you know, impregnating the women and continuing the civilization, I'm pretty sure, right? Sure, okay, obviously. Old guy's yep. been shooting blanks for a while, probably, so he was like, all right, <laughs> save Atlantis, save New save Atlantis. Save Atlantis, I'll fuck your daughter, yeah, absolutely. All right, makes makes sense. Yeah, so, and, and he gives him some wine. Now, keep in mind, the last time he took wine from this guy, he ended up roofied, right? But... He's about to drink the wine again like a fucking idiot. <laughs> Hestia has to, like, squeeze his shoulder and be like, are you fucking kidding me? Do you Remember know? Roofie? Dude. It has roofies. And to be fair, I've had to do this to Heath a couple of times. We're in the middle of like a big roofie poison feud. Like it's been going back and forth. Just don't drink anything, <laughs> right? Like, you know, now don't drink anything here. I feel like I'd have to give Heath this warning, though. Just like, come on. Man. He's like, guys, hey, good, good. Just going to have a little. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> How much can I drink before I'm going to have a little bit I just want to have a little. A little. <laughs> Line up and more. So process turns around to yell at the big naked picture of his grandma Right. And while his back is turned, Hess just swaps the goblets man in black style. Mm hmm. So 
He comes back to the table. They drink their wine. He passes out right away. Totally can't handle his roofies. This guy, total lightweight. Can't handle his roofies. Yeah. Fucking amateur. And then Hestia takes um, Blair by the hand and they rush off at like a brisk mall walking speed. Okay, again, in the 1950s, this was an Olympic level sprint. You guys really <laughs> need to read up on your the the 46 minute mile. Roger just- Bannister. <laughs> so okay, so meanwhile, the monsters still following along with the with the B team, right? They get back to the spot where they went into the uh, to New Atlantis, but now it's all sealed up. And they can't get in. Oh, yeah, because they got the, like, magic door, like Donkey Kong Country, like, secret room just phase through the yeah. the door, but they're not in the right place. Apparently, yeah, something like that. Like the gummy bears, too. I wrote gummy bears, and I was like, why did I write gummy bears? <laughs> oh, from the cartoon. They have oh, a similar yeah, okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I was yeah, wondering, too, because I went through the notes earlier, and I'm like, I'm dying. And I was so certain that Heath was just like, note to self, gummy buy bears. gummy bears. <laughs> <laughs> so. Pit of despair. Get one yeah. for self. <laughs> Question marks? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but now that they're cornered, the monster, the creature comes out of the woods and they're like, and one of them goes, it can't be for some reason. I wrote in my notes. Why couldn't it be? Like, I get that it's your unple- that it's unpleasant that it's there, but it can't be doesn't seem like the proper emotion. Yeah, You've seen one of these like it like you have no reason to believe that there would just be one of these creatures even. Right. <laughs> Or that you could distinguish between them. It can't be. Is he, wear, is he wearing Adidas? That's weird. That, that can't be. Right? <laughs> that can't be. We, yeah, they might have been commenting on the monster makeup. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, okay. All right. Yep, that makes perfect sense. But they're like, oh, fire a warning shot. And again, that doesn't work. So they just put 16 bullets in him. Uh, but this time, not even that hurts him. Yeah. So they have to throw a grenade at him. They brought grenades to space. Well, it's gas grenades, so that's a thing, right? That's different. I really wanted him to turn to the other guy and be like, and you said, why are you bringing a gas grenade? I bet you feel pretty stupid now, huh? (laughs) I said, what if we meet a creature who's bulletproof? Withdrawn. You got him. I like like that the monster gets gas grenaded, and (laughs) he's just like, yeah, okay. That hit me. It was right, like a yeah, little kid no, fight fair. where it was like, that yes, hit right, you. Right, well, and he was no, like, yeah, me. fine. Yeah. Technically, no, you got me. I'll go wait. It's sort of close. Yeah, he just wanders off. He's just like, all right, well, I mean, we're going to gas grenade each other. I don't even want to play. So he storms off, takes his ball, goes home. And one of the sidekicks turns to the other one and goes, it looks like a Neanderthal. And I wrote in my notes, ah, yes, the famous bulletproof cavemen of the Neanderthals. The Neanderthals. Yeah. Well, and also they, they spend a while going like, wow, he was abnormally large, wasn't he? And he's like, yeah, you can't really tell because there wasn't like a banana there for scale or anything. We knew we were standing next to him, but he was <laughs> abnormally tall. But we assure you, we assure you he was huge. Large <laughs> Neanderthal of the Adidas tribe. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have to clarify this apropos of nothing, yes. right? They're like, that's a Neanderthal. And then fucking Anderson is like, I want to fuck that girl we saw. Yes, you guys yes, remember when we saw totally that girl? Does. Fuck the shit out of her. Hey, and they're like, dude. <laughs> hey, Anderson. Yeah. We're all, uh, we're all thinking what you're thinking, but you know how we don't say it and you do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you need to go back and jerk off on the statue again? Yeah. Cause I'm, I'm a great stand up comedian. <laughs> Is that what it is? Is that what you're saying? So, yeah. So, so we cut back to Blair. He takes Hestia out on the balcony for a good flirt. And they discuss why the movie's not over yet, right? Because the main bad guy is passed out. They could just leave. But the movie's like, oh, we can't leave now because the uh, wall is sealed. And you can't get out until process tells us we can, I guess. Right. We're all the daughters of process here. All women are his daughters. And I wrote, Heath, did you make this movie? You have to tell us. This is being a cop. <laughs> yes. What? Yes, we learned that process is the all daddy. Also, this whole time, Duessa is like listening in on them. And she's doing such a bad job of hiding. And Blair and Hester are doing such a bad job of not seeing her that it's hard to tell whether she's even supposed to be hiding. Yeah, unclear. 
She is. We learn later that she is. And it's supposed to be that they didn't see her. But you'd never guess that from the way that Hestia keeps making direct fucking eye contact. No, the actors don't know. Hester just keeps <laughs> looking over, over. This is another, this is a porn moment. Like just outside of the frame, porn stuff is happening. Okay. Hestia's actor is like, okay, well, uh, no, I know. We're spying, not aware of it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so That's not a dick. Yes. <laughs> Very close to me. But so Hess just like, well, look, we can't end the movie quite yet. We're not feature length yet, but I'll be back at sunset and something probably will happen then or something. Cool. Is there going to be anything for my character to do? No. Or am I going to no. literally knock on various surfaces while you're gone? You should probably just hang out. Knock. There you go. Knock on surfaces. That's perfect. All right. I guess I'll knock on various surfaces you while you're gone. Drink a little wine. That'd be great, right? The good wine. Oh, from before. and I'm asleep again. Yeah, this works out real well for you when you do that. Yeah. It, so, And not only are we going to watch Blair knock on various surfaces to see if one of them's hollow, presumably, mm -hmm. right? Not only are we going to watch that, but we're also going to cut periodically to Larson, the guy that came in with him, who's also just trapped in a room. We cut to Larson. He stands up, paces for a second, sits back down, lights a cigarette, and the scene ends. Well, he didn't, you know, Blair stole knocking on the walls, so he didn't have other. <laughs> There's not a lot of mimes you no can one. do at that point. Yeah. Right, what was no, he he could have run a mile. Yes. <laughs> right. Well, and then, like, fucking Blair starts calling out. He's going, like, Larson, Larson. We cut to Larson. Larson can hear him. And he calls back. He's like, Yeah, Blair, I'm here. But Blair can't hear Larson. Oh, these are one-way sound waves. Fuck. I guess. I hate those. I don't those are <laughs> space audio. Fuck. Space. The I'm space. I can space hear you. Her sound currents are going the other way. I don't know. Yeah. But I guess they don't know how earshot works. But then, meanwhile, Anders and Stanhope are, are we there yetting Higgins as they walk around looking for something? I don't even know. Because they're looking for their crewmates. Where would they be going now? I think they're trying to find the magic gummy bears entrance yeah okay all right yeah following the wall around i mean they they seem surprised when they come across the wall again later but yeah we'll go with <laughs> they <that>. do <laughs> <laughs> so because because one of them even says well maybe we're going the wrong way and i'm like you haven't decided a destination there's no wrong way yet <laughs> But they do find another bit of the wall and they're like, oh, OK, well, Stanhope, climb up the tree and tell us what's on the other side. Right. So he climbs up a tree that's right next to the wall. He sees a bunch of ladies there, a bunch of hot chicks there. He comes down to tell him the good news, but he's doing it in like weird innuendo and they're not getting it. And they're on an alien planet when you really need direct information. Yes. <laughs> We could, oh my gosh, we could wear a big coat and pretend to be an adult to get into the movies, I'll tell you. What the fuck is happening? Right. Yeah, they're like, well, how do we get over this wall to the, all the hot chicks that are over there? And one of them literally says, well, we could all just stand on each other's shoulders like a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> yep, like a fucking car. What genre movie are they in? Because they seem to be very unclear whether it is like a sexy high school hijinks romp or a fucking space adventure. Listen, right. False dichotomy. It does it can be everything you just said? <laughs> like everything. It's like if Flash Gordon just kept getting his dick out, right? <laughs> like it's just, I Amber. Oh, it's out. Oh, Actually, what are you doing there? Oh, sorry. I thought I missed at this moment. So also, <laughs> that's why they call me Flash. After all, but up, up, but up, um, racism. Really should have seen that coming. I laughed when they finally decided on their plan for this, though. Okay. It's so fucking stupid to begin with, right? Because he's like, how are we going to get over the wall? And he's like, the wall that I just climbed a tree that was directly next to that has branches that go over it. And they're like, yeah, that exactly. He's like, what if we cut down a tree? <laughs> with our guns. With our guess, gas guns. With what? Yes, with their binoculars, with their Polaroid camera. I don't fucking know. Let me page that secretary. She'll come and cut it down. <laughs> All right, let's cut down several trees. We'll make a trebuchet out of the trees that we cut down. No, couldn't we just climb it again? No. Why don't we break this ladder no. and make a set of stairs out of it? I already it. said yes. trebuchet. Shh. <laughs> trebuchet. I want to say it one more time. Yeah, he's like, cut down that tree that's right next to the wall and put it right next to the wall. That should work. They'll do it. 
So, okay, so we go back to New Atlantis. Hester checks on her dad, make sure that the plot hasn't moved an inch, right? We get a shot of Larson pretending he can't get past that tiny little curtain. This was the <laughs> best. I can't do this mime. <laughs> what, whatever mime is being asked of me right now, I can't do it. It's not, I, if I push it, I'm just going to go through it. It's all down. <laughs> it's like an angry mime didn't get paid like the Patton Oswalt bit about the comedian. <laughs> like, so fucking angry. Okay, hand, hand. Hand. Fuck, fuck this box. I hate this box. Fuck all of you. I'm not supposed to talk. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so we get that. Then we get, we cut back to the B team. Higgins is barking to him to put the tree up. He, they prop the tree up on the wall. And, but the wall, the, the stone wall is electrified. Yes, it's the force field. It's got a, yep. Oh, is that what it is? It's got a force field going over the top. Yeah, oh, they talked okay. about it earlier. That she was like, my father keeps us here, but there's a terrible force. So oh, like, okay. we fucking didn't believe the movie. They're like, see, we told you there was a force field. <laughs> so it kills trees, which <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> kind of brings about the question of like, how much physical matter has to cross that barrier and like, what the difference a, between a like a bird amount. flying through it's the medium. sky we said and a tree regular. would be? Uh, There's just... not birds here. What? <laughs> okay. So, yeah, so they set the uh, tree down. The, the wall electrifies it. We cut to the women on the other side. They're like, oh, God, it's the creature. And we're like, it's a tree. You can see it. You can see that it's the tree. <laughs> and, and even if it was the creature, it would be the creature being fried by your To be dying. Would, you yeah, would be that glad. would be a yeah. great thing. <laughs> so. And then... The three stooges are like, all right, well, obviously that was a force field. So under and podcast listener, <laughs> that in fact is the answer. They start digging under the wall with their hands I like a bunch of fucking it. dogs trying to get out to fuck. And that's the thing is that Anderson is still trying to get to the women, which really reinforces that image in your mind. <laughs> I wanted them to just cut down another tree. I don't know why we did that, but it worked the first time. <laughs> so meanwhile, and I shouldn't even bring up this scene because it's so short and it doesn't do any fucking thing at all. But we cut to mission control back on Earth. They're getting real nervous about how long it's been since they've been in touch. Right? Keeps going to one ring and then voicemail. That's bullshit, <laughs> right? <laughs> But it's only been like an hour and a half because they called them and they're like, hey, we're going out and doing uh, mission shit. And they're like, OK. And now they're fucking they're all nervous about it. Right. And this scene includes the reason I bring it up is because it includes the worst British accent of all fucking time. Right. The guy who turns to the screen and go, but we mustn't be discouraged. <laughs> <laughs> Floon puff with his one. No. Sir. All right. Here we go. No small actors, <laughs> just small parts. <laughs> We mustn't give up. Oh, fuck. I hope that's not kept in cinema history forever. <laughs> yeah, right. I wanted one guy to be like, is there a chance they're in a weird sex romp with uh, a guy and a bunch of daughters from Atlantis? I just want to throw that out there as a possibility. <laughs> so then we, we cut back to the planet. We have Hestia walking around. Duessa is still spying on her, along with all the other fire maidens of outer space, I guess. She comes around the corner and they all pounce on her and tie her up. Yeah. It's really hard to tie someone up if they don't let you. So she really struggles in the mime at first. And then she has to kind of stop and be like, oh, yes. okay, sorry. It's, right. it's but, you know, kind well, of you hard. Are, so you, I don't want you to hurt my arm or anything. Okay. So. You're going to do a double knot? There's also too many sisters. So there's four or five that are definitely tying her up. But then there's another six that are like, yeah, fucking get her. <laughs> yeah, right. I got your six right. in case you, Those are the people you know, who push like through, yeah. stick their head in and like, you know, pet the back or the shoulder during the porn, you know? There's okay, little, yeah, yeah, exactly. Right, right, yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing is that they expected to be doing porn and they just had too many actresses and they're like, well, I guess all of you are tying her. Yeah, usually when this is a porn, I just start fucking somebody, but you guys are tying her. I don't, I don't know what to do from here. <laughs> So we cut back to Larson. He's still pacing around in case you wondered if he wasn't pacing anymore. Okay, I feel like the actors might be actual prisoners in this moment. Like somehow this director <laughs> got them into this area for this part. I thought it was going to be a porn. <laughs> Just put up a couple pieces of wood that weren't flush and a lady or whatever. And they dove yeah. into this room. Yeah. So then, okay. So then we cut to the satanic altar that the fire maidens have put Hestia on. Mm. And, and I've got to say, it's about fucking time somebody fire maidened. 
God I was going to say. Okay. This was, there's a dance for this moment, by the way. They yes. have a dance. Yeah, they have a, a dedicated dance, number. dance for fire sacrifice. And Duessa is in charge now. Duessa, who was, you know, did the spying and, and narked on Hestia, she's like in charge now for that. Mm -hmm. So she's like the MC and she's drunk with power. She gets to be like the soloist in the dance and she's like dancing in all their faces really hard and yes. snaking around them. I enjoyed her performance a lot. She also explains, and, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, the transgression that Hestia is about to be sacrificed for. Apparently, Duessa was next in line for a dick and Hestia jumped on Blair too soon. Jumped the line for dick. Yes, exactly. And I know what you're probably thinking, podcast listener. Fucking what? Yeah, us too. We have no idea why that is what the movie's about now. I was like, eldest daughter gets to fuck main guy when they show up. What are we, what are we confused about? Obviously, this. <laughs> All duh. right. He is on side because he wrote board. this movie and is. Yes, I was going to say, I have, I'm starting to think he had more to do with this than he's letting on. So it was weird that he had all those DVD copies before we said <laughs> he sent them to us for Christmas. I thought it was just to, you know, get ahead prepare, preparation. <laughs> so, but Duess is like, yeah, but we can't kill her in the middle of the night. That's not how it works at all. We will sacrifice her at sunup. So now there is a ticking clock check mm, yeah space clock and then well thank you and then in probably i think the strongest evidence towards heath's porn theory that we've gotten yet a bunch of other girls come in with higgins anderson and stanhope tied up and they're like we captured them <laughs> off screen right yeah <laughs> and they dug under the wall we can't show you how or what that looked like but here they are yes, exactly. here they are they're wiping off their cheeks a little bit that's nothing that's unrelated and if you go into the room you will it'll smell like an open butt in there for a while but we opened the windows so be cool but wait i want to talk about this because this means that they successfully dug under the force field, yes. which means I need the creature, quote unquote, to feel like a fucking idiot for the rest of the movie. I need him to. <laughs> rah, 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 oh, rah, God rah. Damn it. I didn't. Rah. I could have just right been any rah. fucking really? time. If only wow. I had been homo habilius, which was famous for their ability to use tools. <laughs> I'm going to cut down a tree and use it as a tool of some sort. <laughs> he can't. He's a Neanderthal. He. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I think they're famously known for making tools, right? No, oh, the yeah, Anderthals yeah, were worse yeah. at making tools than no homo habilius. What? I <laughs> said a smart thing and now I'm double and tripling down. That I don't even know if homo habilius is right. That's not, no, that's not the right You had to trap me with your, yeah, with yeah, your Jewish yeah, words. Yes, um, Here I was, <laughs> the prime of my life, the peak of my wit. You just had to tear me down. I'd like to apologize to you in Hebrew as if I'm Kanye. Thank so you. <laughs> <laughs> he did that. He did that this week. But okay, but they could they bring the guys in there like they got they have them all tied up and they're like, we have to now these guys have to watch us sacrifice Hestia. So yeah, the, the voyeurism in the guy's fantasy to check. And then they're like, oh, let's go get Blair and Larson and make them watch as well. And they're like, should every single one of us go in a big group of 14? And they're like, yes, every single one of us should leave these people now, these prisoners. I wanted the guys to turn to each other. Women, go into the bathroom. Am I right? Yes. <laughs> they always go in big groups. <sighs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I wanted to fuck them. You you got told me to talk about other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so we watch Blair Moore. He's still tapping away at the wall. In fact, he's done all the wall tapping a man can do. Damn it. He's all tapped out. But then he's like, what? You know what? How about floor tapping? Ooh. But that also doesn't help. I don't know what's supposed to be happening here. I think he moves the. So it turns out the door, I'll, I promise this makes sense. The door opens when you move the chair. So I think it's just an accident. I think he's like, all right, well, tapping didn't work. Maybe if I move this chair more face. Oh, look at that. That opened the door. I, I, yeah. Right. There's a secret wall that slides away when you push the chair the way you would. If you threw yourself harumphily upon it. Yeah, that was uh, that must happen constantly. Yes. Right, when they people keep stay in that room. When would this chair moving system be helpful? Right. When Thank you. is this good for when would secret passages out of the prison rooms that you have at your compound be helpful? 
Right. So there's no good version, but there is a bad version, and this is it. <laughs> yeah, and unlocked from the inside feels like the opposite of useful when it comes to that. Yes. What was the Batman system where, like, you would say chair and a trap door would happen? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No good. So yeah. So so, but he moves his chair. A door opens that leads him down into the dungeons. So he wanders around in the dungeons for a little while. Calls to Larson. Larson's like, hey, I can hear you. And he's like, yeah, you can already hear me, but now I can hear you too. And he's like, well, that's nifty. He's like, push the chairs around in your room until one of them opens a secret passage. Wait, all the rooms are unlocked by the same secret passage? I know it's done. They must have gotten like a discount or something, but yeah, they're all <laughs> unlocked in the same way. Wait, so if you open the one secret passage, you just get to another wall that you can't open unless the other person does the chair thing on their side too? Yeah, that's why it's such a great system. So I think he's. I think there's a dungeon <laughs> underneath and he just went enough rooms down. Like every room has that and he just kept checking different rooms until he found the one with Larson above him. Yeah. But yeah, so but then they have to, like the gaggle of fire maidens comes by so they have to hide from them, but but both of them want to watch the hot chicks in short dresses walk by so they don't hide very good. And let me let me say something as controversial as it is brave. I feel like I could beat up 20 1965 ladies. <laughs> Their bones are all weak from polio. What? I can run a mile three to seven times faster than they can. <laughs> I'm capable of multiple squat None thrusts. Of these things. I You're feel just like naming nonsense numbers. I, can be, <laughs> I feel like I could beat up 20 1965 ladies. Okay, okay well, well, Patreon goal. I wouldn't cower from if, if I was being chased. <laughs> Listen, if we have any listeners who were born in 1965. Well, I was going to say, no, like not now, because they've had chime to, no, I'm talking, I will go back to 1960. Now they've okay, drunk well, milk. Okay, well, it's 56. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Now they've yep. drunk milk and done yoga. They've had children yep. and done the crossword. Now they're, they're prepared for me. And 70s. But when yeah. they were in their young, when they were in their youths, just out of the iron lung, <laughs> so, skin soft as a new ham from the butcher. Yeah, they're, they've been had their face smoked in since they were a baby. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Listen, I'm confident that 20 of my grandma, who's 98, could beat the shit out of you like but, Agent no, Smith. No, but she's jerkified. That's what I'm saying. She's jerkified. I'm I'm saying I could beat up your grandma. He said in 1956. <laughs> When she was soft <laughs> and unprepared and wasn't swimming laps every day, right? She was worried about high school and mathematics and the fact that they just invented algebra. That's when I could get her. <laughs> and I'll fight any time traveler from 1965 that's a woman under to the prove age of 20. Yeah. To prove it. And do, I'm right. the Andy Kaufman of this podcast. Pa Patreon. No, goal. you were saving me. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, the fuck I wasn't. Sir. <laughs> Look behind you. So we cut back to the sacrificial chamber where Hestia and the B team have been have been left. And apparently it's taken this long for the guys to realize, oh, fuck, they're going to sacrifice you. That must be why you're on that sacrificial altar. Right. I thought she just had a bunk bed that was really uncomfortable. Am I right, <laughs> Anderson? <laughs> so uh, what? <laughs> so meanwhile, so. Larson and, and Blair, they show up in Prasus's chamber. They check around to see if they can find their guns anywhere. There they are. Yes, they do. <laughs> They're buying that only thing that they could be behind. It's honestly short of the me thinking of a really good puzzle for the rest of the cast in D&D Minus. No one has ever been more embarrassed with their hiding spot slash riddle than <laughs> it's just behind this little couch thing. Oh, I don't well, know why. Yeah, obviously, that's what you thought we so. Yeah. Look there. I wanted them to like start moving chairs around to try to find the guns. All the walls are and, open. But then they get dropped into a dungeon and they're like, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a second level because we thought it was good <laughs> from the first. Fuck, okay. <laughs> this, that was solid. That was solid. Open the door of the creatures behind it. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, and so now the guys are like, okay, we've got our guns back and it's just, you know, fucking 12 polio ass having non-milk fed pre- Ronald Reagan sports fitness thing. Ladies, I think we can just go now, right? Yeah. And Blair is like, no, I have to take Hastia with me. And he's like, dude, you can't come back with a lady from the space thing. That's too, that's, that's too much. 
What are you going to say to the American British guy? What are you going to tell Floon Puff? Hey, good news. I found a fucking new person, but we're going to be a little short on rations. Come on. Think this yeah. through, man. It's And it's like a three week ride with her. It, the vibe's going to be weird, right? It's going to be new. Super you're going to like bring, make out. You can't bring your girlfriend on a buddy trip. <laughs> Gross. Right. So, so they're going to find her. They have to hide from the gaggle of firemans again. And as they walk by this time, they're like, also, oh, it's a good thing that we found those other three earthlings and are, you know, holding them captive in this other room over here. And they're like, yeah, sure is good that we did that and announce it as we walk by. Why would you tell me that? Of course, I know that. You know what? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. That's why you stand in the corner and don't get to dance. OK, hey, question. What the fuck happened to the creature? Oh, well, so then we cut to the creature. Now, to be fair, he was outside this entire time being like, under, how did I not fucking <laughs> think of uh, sure. uh, Yes. Ah, oh, fuck. Yes, he comes across the tunnel and he's like, oh, f ah, that's, f I'm fucking dumb. I, that's I dumb. It. The movie just forgets about the creature like nine different times. And this is one of those final times where they're like, oh, yeah, creature. We, we have a, uh, there's another thing going on. Fucking, we've been planning a thing the whole time. You didn't. You forgot the creature. So, yeah. So, <laughs> it, it, so we cut to the creature. We remind everybody that's there. We go back to Blair and Larson. And he's like, oh, so the girls have kidnapped, you know, the B team. Do you still want to take Hestia with us? And he's like, obviously, why would that have changed, though? Well, I'm just saying, now that we know that there's a kidnapping risk, maybe we just fuck off and she can, you know, <laughs> get lit on fire or whatever. <laughs> they didn't say there'd be danger. <laughs> I only have two more gas grenades. <laughs> yeah, right. There's also a moment here where they just, they get lost. It's the best. Right? They're wandering around the dungeon and the guy's like, wait, so is it left? And he's like, I thought it was right, but it could. Fuck, I, are we at purple eight? I thought I remember from the parking lot <laughs> thing. It was purple eight. Fuck. Oh, God, Google Maps didn't save my parking. I told you we're not even on the third floor. We're not on the third floor? <laughs> <laughs> We're on the fourth. We got to get floor. one of those. Uh, what do they call Apple tags? We should get one of Apple yeah. tag and just put it in the car. It's great. <laughs> I could swear I remembered our space parking space. So <laughs> <laughs> space space. Fantastic. Fantastic. That's, yes, that's space space. That was good shit. So meanwhile, so process now is waking up from his stupor. Right. So that's going to add up to something. I guarantee. Meanwhile, back at the sacrificial chamber, they are well into human sacrifice dance number two. Yeah. And they are really out of dances at they this point. They have right? run They're out of the body motions. <laughs> yeah. Like, this was, it was like the Ministry of Silly Dances at the end of their run. <laughs> and they're like, uh, arm, elbow, elbow out. Is that, that's a thing, right? We haven't done elbow out. It's like the first dance at a wedding, right? They do the arm slide, the spin, the dip, but there's four and a half uh, minutes to make oh you feel God. my love left. And it's right. just like, I'm ah. doing the dice, man. Is this a thing, right? <laughs> this is a good wedding a dance. Salt and pepper shaker. Salt and pepper there we shaker. Go. Oh, that's Salt a good one. Pepper. A cabbage patch. I don't know what it is, but I know it's a thing, right? <laughs> so God damn. Why'd your, why'd your dad have to die? We could have done something else. <laughs> <laughs> Selfish. So, and then, so we, while they're doing the dance, process storms along, ready to give him a piece of his mind, but the creature jumps out and eats him as he walks past. See, there was going, they were going somewhere with that the whole time. I wrote in my notes, okay, feels, feels kind of like process and the creature are doing their own movie. <laughs> So, well, and then we cut back to Blair and Larson. They can hear the music at the sacrifice dance, so they follow the music. That's how they figure out where they were parked, too. See, it's all coming together now. It's all coming together. But unfortunately, the creature can also hear the music, so he gets to the sacrificial chamber before the good guys. Don't worry, the women have a plan. They're all going to press themselves against the wall and scream. Yep, yep. <laughs> The Eli boss. Again, I could take these. I could take these women. I feel like I could take this. Okay. I, we have the same combat techniques. But the creature is so silly looking. And now we get like a full, we saw yes. it. And then they do reaction shots, which are meant to be like, oh, we saw a scary monster. Now we react and maybe scream and maybe have scared face. But it's all like little kids when you tell them like, don't laugh, but we put a camera on you and Every reaction shot is like almost laughing, trying to stop yeah, themselves. Yeah, right. From Someone laughing. doing a Grinch face just to try and keep the, the, the lower lip thing where you're trying to keep <laughs> exactly. the straight face going. That's all of them. 
Well, and so all the girls are, are pressed up against the wall screaming, except Tuessa, who I don't know what the actor was going for here, but what I'm getting is her thinking, I I could see myself fucking that creature. I could, yeah, I could get, I could learn to love that face. Tuessa's like, you know, if I start, if I marry this creature right now, right here, I don't have to <laughs> sacrifice my sister. <laughs> and then I can bring this, the creature to every Christmas and they'll be like, oh, you brought the creature this year. And she's like, yeah, we're married. So you better get used. To, oh, this is great. I'm going to wreck a bunch of family gatherings. <laughs> so- <laughs> okay. Just broad level question. They have this new Atlantis civilization. They have technology that flew them from Earth to Jupiter or a moon of Jupiter. Yep. Maybe like hundreds of years. I don't know how long they've been there, but they have that technology. But one growly like ape guy is destroying their entire world and they can't fight back. They don't have a gun that kills him. Nothing. They have a force field that can like be, like electrify the trees from a distance or whatever. But yeah, they they, they have not figured out a, a any way to deal with it. Heath sounds like me in 2016. I just want to throw that out uh, Yeah, there. okay. It's, All right. I said a lot of similar stuff after the election. <laughs> so. Don't we have murder technology for this situation? <laughs> it's exactly what I said. Okay, now you're stealing my lines, Heath, okay? <laughs> So yeah, so the the monster comes in. He throws to us. He picks to us up and gently throws her off camera, where there's a mattress, no doubt. And then he walks up to Hestia, who's tied up the sexiest. But before he can, I don't know, eat her or whatever he's planning on doing, Blair and Larson show up, guns blazing. Yeah, and they shoot him, and he's like, ah, ah. But it's, I, I was right, bulletproof from earlier. You already knew I was bulletproof, right, from earlier. Well, these guys did. The other guys did. Right. Yeah, but then. Luckily, uh, fucking Higgins knows what to do. He says, throw a grenade at it. And he's like, into the room that you guys are all in? Yeah, don't worry. It's a gas grenade. <laughs> Sorry, did you say, don't worry, it's a gas grenade? <laughs> yeah, don't worry, it's a gas grenade. <laughs> that That's like, less of a problem for the small room we're in? Yeah, that's no, it. it's my, better. All right. So he throws a grenade at his girlfriend, at Hestia, at the love interest. The grenade explodes. The monster falls backwards into the fire pit that they were going to sacrifice Hestia into, and he dies. Weird uh, vulnerability slash invulnerability matrix here. <laughs> Not clear what's happening here. It's like Iocane gas, I guess, and like all the sure. rest of them are, you know, mithridatismed into not having <laughs> any susceptibility to Iocane gas. There you go. Very possible. I don't know. Yeah. So he falls over and he dies. They rescue the guys in Hestia, they untie him. Hestia says, she turns to uh, Blair and she says, I prayed for you. And I'm like, Christian Christian move. move. Okay, <laughs> so this means I didn't use my New Year's Eve one. I get another right? one yeah. this year. I get, I get hey, another. I'll tell you what, Eli, if you're going to bring me shit like this, you can have as many as you want. No. <laughs> I enjoyed this Blu-ray collection coming out of storage. So yeah, so they have a big old kiss. And now all the other fire maidens that were going to sacrifice her minutes ago are on her side now that there are a bunch of guys with guns and grenades and shit rescuing her, I guess. Hey, all of you were just trying to like burn me at a stake a second ago. I don't think it's your be the, no, we're not letting you just be nice right away. That seems like that should be the reaction here. Right? right? Come on, it's Christmas. <laughs> so, so yeah, so, but everybody just walks through the garden arm in arm. Uh, right. Everybody's happy. All the guys like pair up with a girl. They find Process's dead body. Well, I guess Blair finds it, right? He turns to everybody. He's like, oh, I'm sorry to tell you that Process is dead. They all do the elephant nose of grief gesticulation together. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? they're all like, eh, what are you going to do? Yep. And they're like, oh, Hestia, you now are our queen. You're in charge. And she goes, well, I was actually going to go back to Earth and fuck the shit out of Blair. So um, Die of a flu. So Nisa, you're in charge. Who? The character that we've never met. You're in charge. You tried to burn me. I mean, but so did everybody. So, yeah, you know. Right. <laughs> and the, the daughters are like, but we were promised husbands. And fucking Anderson is like, give it a, give it a, give it a, give it a, give it a. Did someone call for my boner? <laughs> Group sex. <laughs> well, and that's how bad they were at making movies back then, right? All the other 
astronauts just leave. I'm like, why? How about you stick around and then sp- send the ship later and pick them up? Or so, I, you no, know, I don't know. No. Who knows? No, no. They know what Anderson can do. They know that when, <laughs> it, when Anderson gets a fucking, the best thing you can do is leave the planet and come back <laughs> when it is fully repopulated with 50% sexually virulent Anderson clones. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Virulent? <laughs> what if you're my fucking grammar coach today? Just fucking get yeah, trying to say virulent. Stop, stop correct. I believe stop virulent. Stop it. Is what John, we're virulent. Yes. Homophilious. <laughs> so. Wait, can't New Atlantis just fly back if they want? They they flew here. Yes. So couldn't they just fly back? They have you would think spaceships. Or spaceship that like the, the technology, like the knowledge required to build the spaceship, certainly, yeah. So yeah, so but all the good guys get back in the spaceship with Hestia. The other fire maidens stand outside and wave in unison. <laughs> he goes, call control, Blair does. And I'm like, yeah, explain all this shit. But Anderson's like, yeah, what exactly do we tell him? And he says, mission completed. He's like, is that all? Do you don't want to you warn him that you've got a sexy alien chick that you're bringing back with you? Nothing? I feel like our mission was like soil samples and stuff. I feel like this is definitely... <laughs> we didn't do any of that shit. Like quite literally the only thing... Oh, I got some soil samples, if you know what I mean. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Anderson! My dick. Go on, wham, ba bam. And that's it. That's the end. <laughs> So I guess that does it for our review of Fire Maidens of Outer Space, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to get back on track for next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, what if I told you all the physical illness you've ever experienced oh, God was damn actually just your emotions trapped in your body. But there was a group of wise, wise hippies available on Tubi.com who could tell you the truth of illness. We'll be watching... Emotion. Oh, for <laughs> fuck's sake. I thought you were going to say right. the video about the Alexander technique that I use as ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> That'll work too. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 437 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon owners that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help out a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing A, The Citation, D, D, Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinema suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slapping Vivid Drafts on Mars. All the other musical was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. NASA learned its lesson from this movie and went on to hire Stanley Cooper <laughs> instead for future missions. <laughs> Hestia got to Earth and realized that Blair was a B minor. Luckily, Anderson had brought a copy of The Ethical Slut with him to the moon of Jupiter, (laughs) and everyone was able to come to an excellent understanding. best numbers of the day there you go warming yeah up. i'm warming up you, i was you just thought you were losing it's it been a minute you're like larry bird yeah i am i'm just like larry bird you're like larry bird the famous you got this bird okay. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of puzzle and a thunderstorm llc copyright 2024 all rights reserved